Ah. Oh, nice and straight. Well, I like doing things myself because it keeps me in touch with my engine room, so to speak. But what do I do with this drill now? It's an expensive piece of equipment that I rarely use. Most of the time, it's just sitting around doing nothing. A little bit like the servers in my data center that I keep around for peak workloads that rarely happen. Wouldn't it be nice to have this as a service, kind of like the virtual machines in the cloud that I don't need to have as an asset all the time. Turning a product, a shipping a physical product into a service is a profound idea. And we observe many customers making such a transition. For example, instead of shipping train engines, you could provide a service and charge per passenger kilometer. Or instead of shipping gas bottles, you could be selling cubic meters of gas. And those are great business models because they focus on the customer need and the value that they provide. But if those are such great business models, there's one important question that we should ask. Why didn't we do that already 30 years ago? And there's a simple answer. We did not have the technical capabilities. In a services model, downtime is now your problem. If the drill is broken, no holes will be drilled and no pictures will be hung and you won't get paid. And you cannot sell the customer a new drill. So therefore you need to monitor your equipment and predict failure. For that you need sensors. You need to transport data for analysis through Internet of Things and analyze using data analytics or advanced machine learning techniques. Now the good news is that you can get these kind of capabilities from cloud services like AWS. And that's why we are seeing such a dramatic shift from a product to a services model across many industries. It doesn't mean that shipping physical product is no longer a viable business model, but it does mean that you have more options now that you should consider. The transition from shipping physical products to providing as services is a major shift. It is not something that you can copy and paste. It's easy to look at other organizations' success stories, but you cannot grasp the essence of the transformation by just looking at the end result. That point can be vividly illustrated by past transformations. In the 1970s, Japanese automakers disrupted the US automotive industry. And the incumbent automakers would look at the end product at the Japanese cars to understand why they can be so much better. But the real change wasn't in the car, the change was in the approach to quality. US automakers would do quality assurance at the end, essentially trying to make an existing product into higher quality. Mm, well, almost square. The Japanese automakers, however, understood that quality is built in. So if they would find an issue on the production line, they would hold the line, analyze and solve the problem systemically so that they could build cars of high quality straight out. But the difference between the two cannot be seen in the product. And holding a production line would seem like the worst possible idea unless you understand the change in quality. A similar change occurs during the transition from a product model to a services model. As a product company, you primarily focus on development and manufacturing of product. By shifting to a service model, you own a larger part of the value chain, including distribution, usage, and servicing. This is going to cause you some pain because you're now dealing with outages and servicing of equipment. So this change only makes sense if you can take advantage by getting feedback from this back into your product development cycle. So the shift from product to services is not just a shift in the distribution model, but a complete shift of your entire business model. And that's why these changes are called transformation which comes from Latin and means changing shape. In this case, changing the shape of your entire business. The transition from a product to a service model is a great example of business strategy and IT strategy working hand 
in hand. Traditionally, IT strategy follows the business strategy. And that makes sense because IT supports the business. But as we've seen, advances in technology also fuel new business models, making that relationship a two-way street. That's why it's more important than ever to stay in close touch with your IT engine room, as we saw in the last episode. Thank you for watching TN Transformation. We look forward to engaging in more topics with you in the future.